Well, good morning and happy Independence Day. It's July 4th, 2016. And so in celebration of Independence Day, I wanted to declare your independence from doing one of the major assignments in the class called the research activity. If you notice in your syllabus and in the course, you'll see some references perhaps to the research activity. Um, but this summer, you know, there's just so much going on. There's a lot that you're already doing each week. I'm, I'm sure that you agree with me. And so what we're doing is just I'm taking that assignment out, and uh, that won't have to be required. So just be aware, when you see that in the gradebook, the research activity is not something that you have to do. But there are things that you do need to do this week. And we're learning about mixed methods research and action research this week. And these are some methods of research that don't really necessarily fit under qualitative or quantitative research types. They are kind of their own types of research, but they are very important ones. So mixed methods research, as most of you now know, is a type of research study in which qualitative and quantitative data are collected and those are combined in the research in certain ways in order to you know make stronger findings um, so that's one thing to be aware of and then action research is a nice one especially I think for professionals in the field and as we talk about educational research that's one area of research it's great for teachers because teachers can actually do action research in your own classroom. Let's say you notice as a teacher that some of your students are really struggling in a certain area or maybe your majority of your class really isn't doing as well as maybe last year's class is on uh, let's say reading comprehension. Then you can try a new in intervention. Try out something different with reading comprehension. Maybe you want to implement some iPads and some activities on the iPad each, each week or each day and try that out. But um, what you can find, and then you, you kind of go through and try something out, then you test the students to see if it's improving, and then if it is, then maybe you'll make some adjustments and add that as part of your curriculum, and you'll continue to improve. There's actually a cycle associated with action research where you go back and check things again, try to make some adjustments to your intervention, then test again, see if you can improve those scores and I think good teachers in the classroom should all be good action researchers because you can take the weight of evidence or study your your own students and find out really what's working for them to improve their scores and improve their academic achievement so that's an example of action research of course it works in other fields as well um, but the idea is that you're trying something out within a situation that you are kind of situated in you're trying something new out seeing how it works adjusting it, trying it again, seeing how it works by, by uh, collecting data. So those are mixed methods research and action research. Remember that I warn a little bit against doing mixed methods research just simply because it combines qualitative and quantitative research and that this is probably your first foray into the research field. So it's better to focus on either qualitative or quantitative. If you do want to do mixed methods research, that's okay. But maybe just choose one of the qualitative or quantitative as the major one as like the bigger part of it and then let's say you you want quantitative to be the biggest part of it then you'd put qualitative as just a follow-up kind of a thing and so your most of your work in this class would be on quantitative in this case so you talk about your study being a, as if it were a quantitative study, but then you might add a, a few paragraphs about how you're going to do some follow-up interviews or observations that are qualitative. And then you'll talk about how you integrate those in the data analysis later on in the study. So that's just something to be aware of with mixed methods and action research. So let's look at some of the class activities for this week. You're going to be reading about these two types of research, chapters 15 and 16 and also completing the quizzes for those. Um, you're going to post about qualitative research designs. Um, so we've been learning about qualitative research designs, narrative research, ethnographic case study research, and then also you'll be reading this week about mixed methods research and action research. And the discussion this week is about, after reading about these new things, has your research study idea changed at all? And how have you thought differently maybe about your research plan based on some of these new qualitative methods or mixed methods or action research. So that's the discussion 
for this week um, to talk about. Remember to post by Wednesday and then respond to other people by Saturday on that. And then finally this week we have the design participants and procedures assignment due. This is the next step in your research process for your research proposal. And this one splits things out. If you're going to do a quantitative study, you'll have a different set of requirements than if you're going to do a qualitative study. But you do need to choose one of these methods. And by the way, you could choose mixed methods, but like I said, try to choose, if you're going to do mixed methods, try to choose one of these as your main area and then just mention as a follow-up the other one. Um, and then also you could choose action research as well for your study, but uh, these are the choices. And then if you want to do a quantitative research proposal, complete task six from the textbook. If you want to do a qualitative research proposal, complete task seven from the textbook. And so if you're going to do a quantitative one, you'll need to talk about the share the type of quantitative research, share who are your participants for your research, and you need to come up with a group that makes sense for that type of research. Who are the people who you will be studying? or who will respond to your survey, or who will do the experiment, or whatever it is. Um, then the instruments, be sure to include or and discuss an instrument or possible instruments to include in your study. So if there's an existing instrument out there that you know you want to use, that's great. But include it, or at least tell some pretty detailed information about it. What is the instrument, and what kinds of questions will it have? It's a, if it's not an existing instrument, and it's one that you think you'll make yourself, that's okay too. But you do need to have a couple of maybe sample items from it, or maybe here are the four areas that I'll be asking about in my survey that I will create. That'll give me an idea of if the instrument will fit, fit the research question that you're trying to solve or answer. And then include a design. What's the design of the experiment? So is there going to be a pretest, then an intervention, then a post-test? And then include a figure or diagram of the research design. Okay, so that'll show pretest, intervention. Maybe there are two groups, so group A gets treatment A, and group B gets treatment B. And then post test, you can show that in a pretty good diagram. You could have a box for each one. I'll show you an example a little bit later. And then the procedure. So really, the procedure is is um, related certainly to the design. Um, and the research procedure. Actually, I, I allow you to do a figure or diagram of either the design or the procedure. Let's see, for qualitative research proposals, you're going to talk about the type, whether it's case study, ethnography, or narrative. Who are your participants? All right, so explain this group. Who are you going to observe or interview or do the qualitative type research? Um, what data collection procedures will you take? And what data are you going to collect? and then explain your procedure for this type of um, research as well. What are you going to do first? What's going to happen next? What, what are the steps in your research study as you complete them? So remember with qualitative research, it's not going to be exactly as cut and dry maybe as quantitative research, but you do have to have a lot of detail on exactly how you're going to interact with your, your participants and what data you're collecting for this type of data. Now whatever you choose, whether it's quantitative or qualitative, then you need to be able to say this is survey research and or whatever type of research it is. This is causal comparative research. And then you also need to be able to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of that kind of research. So share a little bit about how maybe causal comparative research is strong in one thing, but it's maybe not so strong in another thing. It's okay. Researchers have to be this way. You have to be, I guess, tentative about your results. You have to be a good researcher and say, well, there are some drawbacks to this type of research, and here they are. So you might want to go back to the chapter on whatever research you choose to get those drawbacks and make sure you explain those well. So for, And it's also graded differently for quantitative and qualitative research proposals. So for quantitative, you know, you have a, the type of quantitative research, whether it's survey, correlational, causal, comparative, experimental, or single subject experimental, is clearly indicated. The participants are clearly indicated, in which, including population from which sample is selected, size, and important characteristics related to the study. The description of the instruments provides sufficient detail. 
about the instrument. The design of the research study is pre presented clearly and has a clear figure diagram. And the design description indicates why the design was selected and includes potential threats to validity associated with the design as well as ways the study may overcome these threats. So again, you need to be able to talk about the method that you have read about in your book and uh, talk about how you might be able to overcome some of the problems that, that the research method you've chosen has. And then the procedure has a clear overall timeline and it tells about the manner in which the sample was selected and her groups are formed. So again, this is talking in past tense, but of course your research study, you don't even have to complete it during this class, so you're going to propose to do these things, but you don't actually have to complete them. And then uh, pre-test and post-test data, when, how and when they're collected, and the ways in which groups are different, and aspects of the study that are similar for all groups, because that's the way that quantitative studies work. And then of course there are APA formatting guidelines for qualitative. You want to clearly indicate the type of qualitative research. Relevant literature citations are included that relate to the study and support the need for the study. All right, so that's something to different. You might, might take some information from your lit review and talk about how these things are, are studied before. I think you've done a lot of that work in your literature review. The participants are clearly indicated, including number, how they were selected, and important characteristics related to the study. So again, with qualitative research, you're selecting people. You are choosing who to study more than you would if you're in quantitative research. So how are you selecting people? Why did you choose this group? Data collection methods are clearly described and appropriate to the focus of the research study. Instruments are included, and there still are instruments with qualitative research, but they're just not as clear instruments, maybe, or as cut and dry as, as with quantitative. You know, you might have a, a, a interview list of questions to start with, but they might go from there and might not include all of the questions you might use. Uh, let's see, the design description clearly indicates why the design was selected and includes potential threats to validity. So again, talk about the strengths and weaknesses of whatever design you choose and it includes a clear overall timeline of events as they should happen in the research study. So what do you expect to happen for this research study? All right, so that is the assignment. Here's an example right here if you want to. Under the, at the very bottom of this week's activities, don't lose it, um, is design participants procedures example from a previous class, so you can look at that and see what a student has done. In the end of the class, you'll combine everything. You'll combine this with your lit review, with your previous assignments that you've done that have to do with the, um, the research proposal that you're creating. But you don't have to combine them now. You can just include this information for now for this project. And that's sufficient for now. Uh, one last thing about this class, is, or about next week, is that the literature review is due next week. You have all completed a preliminary literature review, so you need to add to that and complete that by next week. So hopefully you continue, you're continuing to read in your area those two to three or three to five articles each week, and you can add some of those into your literature review to make it a completed one. And the difference is really is that this one has 15 or more sources of information um, and the other one only had, what was it, 7 to 10, I think, or 7. So that, that almost doubles, or, or it more than doubles, the amount of sources of information that you have to have for your final literature review, and that will be due next week. Not this week, but next week. But I wanted to make sure that you knew about it this week so that you could prepare. Um, and then also just remember that this should be mostly primary sources. So remember, those are the sources where somebody has done a research study and they're the ones reporting about it, and there's a methods section. That is a primary source. It's not, you don't want to have a lot of secondary sources where somebody's just combining a bunch of different studies and talking about what, what they all say. Instead, you want to get to the study itself that was done by someone, and, and most of these 15 references should be primary sources for your literature review. So those are some things to be aware of, but of course this week you have just the design participants and procedures assignment to submit, and uh, that's about it for this week, so have a wonderful 4th of July, and then get to work on this class. Have a great week.